Hey, good morning, Finney River. Hope everybody's doing well. Good Monday morning, everybody. Uh, we are in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to finish this chapter up today, and then we're going to dive right into 2 Thessalonians tomorrow. So, hope you'll continue to follow me here on the daily ride. And so we're in verse 12, and we're going to finish out the remainder of the chapter. A lot of these verses are really small, but I think today we're going to get some good stuff out of it today. So beginning in verse 12, we're just going to dive right in. But we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and give you instruction, and that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. We urge you, brethren, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. Verse 16, rejoice always. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Verse 18, in everything give thanks for this is the is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Verse 19, do not quench the spirit. Verse 20, do not despise prophetic utterances. Verse 21, but examine everything carefully, hold fast to that which is good, and abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls us and he also will bring it to pass. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss and adjure, I adjure you by the Lord that you will have this letter read uh, to all brethren. Grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. I'm going to read that in, in the Amplified. That was if, with in the NASB, and we're going to read that. I'm going to, I'm going to read that passage all the way through in verse 12, and then I'm going to make some comments on, on a couple of passages that just feel like the Lord uh, has, has for us this morning. Uh, now we ask you, brother, brothers and sisters, to appreciate those who diligently work among you, recognize, acknowledge, and respect your leaders who are in charge over you in the Lord and give you instruction. And we ask that you appreciate them and hold them in the highest esteem and love because of their work on your behalf. Live in peace with one another. We earnestly urge you, uh, believers, admonish those who are out of line, the undisciplined, the unruly, the disorderly, uh, encourage the timid who lack spiritual courage, help the spiritually weak, and be patient with everyone, always controlling your temper. Seeing that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek that which is good for one another and for all people. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be in unceasing and persistent in prayer. In every situation, no matter the circumstance, be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench, subdue, or unrespect be unresponsive to the working and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Do not scorn or reject gifts of prophecy or prophecies, spoken revelations, words of instruction, or exhortation or warning. But test all things carefully so that you may recognize what is good. Hold firmly to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Withdraw and keep away from it. Now may God, the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, that is, separate you from profane and vulgar things, make you pure and whole, undamaged, consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose. 
And may the spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful and absolute trustworthy is he who is calling to you, to himself for your salvation, and he will do it. He will fulfill his call by making you holy, guarding you, watching over you, and protecting you as his own. It goes back go up here and, and, and talks about or brings a conclusion to what he was saying in verse 23. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all the believers with a holy kiss as brothers and sisters in, in God's family. I solemnly charge you by the Lord that you have this letter read before all the congregation, the grace and the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So I want to go back up to um, verse 16, 17, and 18. And that's what I want to focus on this morning and give you a word of encouragement. Rejoice always, is what it said in the first uh, translation that I read from, the NASB New American Standard Bible. That's, sometimes it's hard to do. A scripture that I used yesterday and, and the message that I that I uh, finishing up that series of messages we talked about in James James says count everything joy when we fall in find ourselves in diverse different trials and tribulations that's very hard to do but if we start training our mind if we're going to get into a car and drive it we've got to have some sort of knowledge of how to how to do it a lot of times kids watch their parents uh, there you know there's a certain routine that you get in and you do you open the door you get into the driver's seat with the key and ignition some keys don't have or some cars don't have keys they go in the ignition anymore so we start the car put our foot on the brake put it into into reverse or and and to drive whichever direction that we're happen to be going and we're careful to watch where we're, you know, make sure we're not going to hit anything. And then we take off on our, on our, wherever we're going our de and make our way to our destination. But we have, we have been trained to do that. We've been trained to walk. We've been trained to eat. We've been trained to work on computers some, some have it. We've been trained to write. We've been trained to read. We've been trained to, to talk to people, to communicate. So the thing is, is that we have to train our mind that when we get into a tough situation, we need to slow down, listen to the Holy Spirit. You're never going to steer us wrong. And we can start focusing on Jesus and what he would have us to do through the situation, through the circumstance, through the trial, so that he may be glorified and our faith may be strengthened. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Boy, that is a is a hard thing to do as well. How do we how do we pray without ceasing? Well, you know, we say an amen, that means that means the end. Amen is is not the the end. I mean, you watch a movie, you get through, and then the end comes up at the end of the movie. That's not what amen means. Amen means that whatever promise has been made, so let it be written, so let it be done, as you heard in, in the Ten Commandments movie with Charlton Heston and Yul Brynner. Uh, that's what it is. When we hear a promise in the, in the word, whether it's being spoken over the radio or Christian radio station, if it's music, if, it, if we're reading it, uh, if we're hearing a pastor speak it in a message, we want to claim that promise. We want it to be a part of our life. Say amen, and, and we're, that's how we receive. The illustration I use with the box is that the only way that I, you, if you're going to hand me a box, I've got to hold my hand out and receive that box. And in order to gain access to the inside, I've got to open that box. And whatever's in that box, I need to pull out and then make it a part of what I'm doing. If it's a decoration, set it on a shelf so it can be viewed. If it like it was a piece of sound equipment that I was utilizing to speak over the over the sound system, whatever present we were given, we have to open it, open the box, and bring, and receive it. 
So when there's a promise being given in Scripture, or a promise has been related to us, we need to receive that by not necessarily saying amen out loud, but you can say it to yourself. You can say it out, out loud if you want to. But we have to pray without ceasing. How we how we do that? We need to have an attitude of prayer. We need to I as, as a maintenance man for some over some tw twenty some odd years of doing. I learned to allow God to help me uh, during times uh, that I was at work. And so if I had an air conditioner problem, by the time that I got to it, actually put my hands on it, I had it pretty well figured out what was going on. But that's because I was talking to God between the time I walked out of the office with the work order till I got to the, to the residence uh, dwell, uh, unit to, to work on it. They usually gave a brief description of what was going on. So between the time I left the office till the time I got there, most time I had it figured out. Now, there was times that it took a little more digging and, and God helped me work through that. But we need to train our minds to listen to God, slow down, listen to the Holy Spirit, never going to steer us wrong, and continually have an attitude of prayer that we talk to him as, as we're getting through our day. It'll make our day go better. Verse 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And that's what I want to, to for us to get today is that we need need to uh, verse sixteen rejoice always rejoice in everything. Look for an opportunity to grow and become stronger in the Lord. Uh, pray without ceasing. How how can we do that? Continual attitude of prayer. Constantly be be in conversation with God. We can be in conversation with God just doing our regular routine because God is in us. And then. And everything give thanks. That that verse eighteen kind of sums up sixteen and seventeen. How how do we pray without ceasing? How do how do we um, rejoice always? Is that we give thanks in everything? I'm thankful for you guys. Hope you guys have a great day today. God bless you. I'm gonna pray for you as you begin your day, and I hope that you. I hope you got guys will continue to start sharing these videos. Let's bust these algorithms and, and allow this to get out so it'll touch more lives with a gospel message of how good God is. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your many blessings. I praise you. We exalt you. We lift up your name. Help us to take these scriptures and apply it to our lives. Thank you for the, the word that we have gleaned through 1 Thessalonians, and I pray that we will glean even more as we open up 2 Thessalonians and uh, that you will speak to our hearts. Bless each person watching this video. Bless each person in and around their lives. May we continually have an attitude of prayer. May we find a way to rejoice regardless of the circumstance. And may we always be thankful. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. I hope you'll continually follow me here on the daily ride. And I hope you'll keep riding.